In May of 1938, the House Un-American Activities Committee was established to root out the threat of communism. What we are here to do is to gather information, as we are ordered to, to do, by an act of Congress with respect to the general operation of the communist conspiracy, wherever it may lead. We are all too familiar with the pattern of communist-led revolution and rioting in Venezuela, Cuba, and more recently in Japan. And it happened here on American soil. They were afraid there was a communist around every corner. World War III was on the horizon, and the Soviets were ready to destroy America. What could they do? How could scores of innocent Americans protect themselves? supposed to do when you see the flash? In their ongoing effort to frighten America's children, the Federal Civil Defense Administration got the word out that the only way to protect themselves from nuclear bombs was to hide under their desks and put their hands over their heads. The way in which we would be reminded as citizens about the threat was to promote the idea that we could be attacked at any time. And the way they did that was they reminded us that we should periodically have drills to protect ourselves. We defeated fascism and we defeated communism. The Martians didn't attack, and nuclear war never broke out. If FDR was right that the only thing we have to fear is fear itself, surely there's nothing left for the nation to fear. What happens frequently is that when big problems go away, smaller ones rise to take up their place. Uh, so that uh, when the Cold War went away, instead of people breathing a sigh of relief, what happened was relatively smaller problems rose up. So what seems to happen is we have this catastrophe quota that basically if one catastrophe goes away, then other ones rise to fill the gap. So we're always worried and always have something to fear. I think we live in about the safest place and the safest times in human history in the U.S. right now. But it often doesn't feel that way, and the reason it doesn't feel that way is because there's so many fears that are promoted by so many different people. I think we have a culture of fear that comes from all sorts of folks and organizations that have real stakes in promoting it, and they benefit from it. So if you start with politicians, they win elections by way of fear-mongering. You move from that to the media. Local TV news is probably the worst offender. The motto there is, if it bleeds, it leads. Thank you, Lisa. A frightening attack in front of a busload of passengers. Thanks, Christine. His last day on the job was his last day alive. Thank you, Mary Beth. A brutal murder caught on tape. Not even witnesses stuck around to help the victim or the detectives. The culture of fear in the United States is unusual. Uh, in fact, extreme and quite remarkable in a way because uh, you know, of all the countries in the world, the United States is far and away the most privileged and the most secure. Alfred Hitchcock was asked, how come he could scare people so silly to the point, wasn't it bad for their health? Hitchcock said, you could watch the birds, but then I turn off the projector and you get to go home, back to real life. But the problem with the way that we've used the news to approximate the way entertainment used to be, we've made the news into a horror movie from which we don't get to go home. I think Hitchcock would be horrified by that. We don't get to turn it off. It's 24-7 now.